Hey guys, so I noticed that only a small percentage of the people who watch my videos are actually subscribed. Uh, so if you like my content, please consider subscribing and turning on notifications to make sure that my content gets to you on time. Hey guys, uh, today I want to cover items. The reason why I want to cover items is because um, recently I've done some coaching and based on my coaching experience, this is probably the number one common mistake. Um, it's a combination of many things. People don't really understand how to make items. Um, it's partially be because everyone always asks for best-in-slot items, and the guides usually show you the best-in-slot itemization for units. But the takeaway is that best-in-slot is only a tool for beginners. You should never really think about best-in-slot when you play a game of TFT. Um, usually, um, there's a very many reasons, but I'll, I'll get into why uh, right now. Before I talk about items, the first thing to know is that there's a minimum and a maximum number of item components you can get per game. Including the 2-2 armory, the 3-2 armory, and all the carousels, uh, you get a minimum of 12 item components and a maximum of 14 item components. So let's just say uh, you're at raptors, uh, or let's just say you're the round before raptors, and you have 14 item components. That means at raptors, you're guaranteed to get zero item component. Uh, similarly, if you have 12 and 13, you're most likely going to get zero item components. And if you have less than 12, let's just say you have 11, then you're guaranteed to get at least one item component. Um, so with that knowledge, usually if you have 14 item components, you should definitely slam your item because you're not getting any more. You have 12 and 13, I'd strongly recommend slamming an item because they're most likely not going to get any more items. So now some of the more advanced stuff about items. Okay, so the first one is item value is based on when you slam it. Basically, the early, earlier you slam an item, the more value you get from it. So let's just say most games end around 6-1. That means if you slam an item at 2-1, you're getting um, value for almost 20 fights. If you slam an uh, item on stage 4-1, then you're getting value for about 10 fights. So hence, uh, kind of the takeaway is a mediocre item slammed at 2-1 is a lot more health saved than the best in slot uh, slammed at stage 5-1. In fact, it's probably more health saved than the best in slot uh, item slammed at 4-1. So the earlier uh, you make an item, the more value it is. Uh, the next, hence the rule of thumb is like early game, if you have a lot of item components, usually my rule of thumb is if you have three item components, slam an item. The exception to this rule is that if the next round is an armory or a carousel, then you could, uh, uh, you could argue to not slam an item. Um, so around mid game, stage three and four, you can start greeting for more item components. And uh, this is because basically if you slam at two one, you're getting 20 fights of value. If you slam at three one, you're getting 15 and four one, you're getting 10, right? So like um, towards like the the difference between ten and fifteen fights, uh, ten to fifteen fights is only five round extra value, and sometimes the uh, the item quality is worth five rounds of extra item value. And then the next thing is that you generally want to slam an item after the armory or the carousel. The armory and the uh, carousel allows you to make better items than the current items you have, so that you can make a better item. So for sure, most of the times it's not really worth making an item on two one, so you can make a better item on two two. Obviously, in the case that you already have the best item you can make, go ahead and make it on 2-1. <coughs> the next uh, key uh, insight is that item components, the value is based on the composition that you're running. So let's just say you're running uh, the falling Dawnbringer board, okay? You get dropped a rod and a tear. You would never slam here, even though Archangel is a really strong item, because these two item components have a lot of value in this composition. With a rod and a tear, you can make items significantly stronger than Archangels. You can make blue and decap, Shoujin and Spellcrit, or any combination of um, a tier item and an AP item. But let's just say you drop, get dropped a bow and a cloak. You should always slam here. Uh, why? Because in this case, the blow, bow and the cloak are both low value uh, items in your composition. And by slamming it, you're getting rid of two low value items to make a passable item in your composition. The uh, Runa's Hurricane will never be amazing in your composition, but you put on Riven and it gets rid of two low value items. And a common argument is, well, why can't you just save the, why can't you just save the cloak for D claw? Well, in this case, if you save the glo uh, cloak for D claw, then you're stuck with a bow. And basically, to get rid of that bow, it's really difficult because the bow makes no good item on Dawnbringers. So what you want to do is, let's just say you are at a carousel. Instead of greeting for D claw, what you want to do is you want to slam the bow and the cloak into a Runa's Hurricane, then just grab a generically good component for Dawnbringers. In this case. Uh, tier or rod would be amazing, right? So you would never go for D-Claw here. And then um, the next uh, next thing I wanted to talk about was putting item components on your units. 
Uh, so generally during stage two, uh, you're heavily rewarded for putting item components on your units. For example, in this case, putting a, a belt on Gragas is a lot of value. Putting a tier on Kha'Zix is a lot of value. And you should always put item, item components on your units. And often, putting item components on your units means winning the fight or killing an extra unit. So it's very valuable. However, at stage 3, it starts not mattering. And stage 4, I would never, almost never put item components on units. And putting item components on your units actually has a lot of nuance. So let's just take the following 6 forgotten board, okay? Let's just say you get dropped a rod. Who would you put it on? <clears throat> In one of my coaching sessions, um, someone put it on Rise. And while in 80% of the scenarios, putting a rod on Rise is probably okay, the problem is that there's a few cases that you don't want the rod on Rise. Um, so let's just say we get a Shadow Chain Vest off of Carousel, then the Shadow Locket definitely doesn't want to go on Rise, right? It probably wants to go on a Frontliner. And then it becomes really awkward. So because um, Shadow Locket is a very high value item that builds out of a, a rod, Sometimes you wouldn't want to put this rod on rise. So I would best not put this rod on rise. Um, a little bit of caveat here uh, is that if you're last pick and you're very unlikely to get a shadow chain vest off the carousel, then you can actually put this rod on rise because uh, you're unlikely to get the shadow lock anyways. Okay, as a, another example, if you get dropped a bow, would it be okay to put on vein? In this case, yes, because there's no high value item that can be built from a bow that you wouldn't want to put on vein, right? So if you go over through the list of the bow items, all the high value bow items, you probably want to on vein anyways. So in this case, bow on vein is totally fine. <coughs> so let's just say you have generic shadow components, right? Who do you put them on? Um, because the Forgotten units, they benefit a lot from having a shadow component on their unit. In this case, Warwick, Victor, Vayne, and Katarina are all okay holders. Why? Because um, let's just say we have a two-star uh, Warwick. Later in the game, we're not like... Uh, it's not going to be very punishing to sell this 2-star Warwick and put in another 1-star Forgotten. It's no big deal. Similarly, for Warwick, uh, Victor, Vayne, and Katarina, that's all the case. However, for the other units like Hecarim, Thresh, Ryze, and Draven, if you put a, a item on a Hecarim and later you have to sell that uh, a Hecarim, the difference between a 2-star Hecarim and a 1-star Hecarim for the 6 Forgotten is a huge difference. So you would never put an item on a Hecarim unless you're committed to it. These, uh, these units are too core. And there's no way to get the component off. So for the shadow components, you want to usually put it on the units that are disposable. Okay, so uh, to summarize, in general, when you're putting an item on the unit, consider the following. Is this unit critical to my team comp as a 2-star? If you're okay to sell this unit later in the game, then we can absolutely put an item component on it. And second, if this item is critical to my team, and if I put this item component on this unit, will I regret it? So for example, the rice situation. The answer is yes, and another high value item that builds from it, then don't put this item component on that unit. But like I said, the caveat right here is that if you have Rod on Rise and your last pick carousel and you're not getting Shadow Locket anyways, then go ahead, you can put the Rod on Rise. So, my last tip for itemization is think about the near future when itemization. Uh, I put the near future because um, I'm talking about the near future as in within like one or two rounds. Um, you definitely don't want to like. Uh, Think about like an entire stage in advance. Um, but here's my example. You're running a standard 6 Stormbringer board. You have your Gragas tank items and you have a blue buff on Karma. At stage, at, at stage 4 2, you have the following items. Rod, Rod, Glove on your bench. You'll be third pick on your carousel and your HP is running low. So you need to stabilize now. What item would you make here? In this case, Decap is definitely stronger than Drill Gauntlet. But even then, you still would probably rather make Drill Gauntlet. Why is that the case? Well, it's because if you make Death Cap, you'll most likely end up with a two-item Karma, right? Um, because um, the only um, uh, offensive item that you want on Karma is probably uh, that builds out of uh, Glove is probably um, Drill Gauntlet. But if you make Drill Gauntlet instead, you can almost always guarantee a three-item Karma, because then you have Blue Buff, Drill Gauntlet, then you'll have a Rod to combine with any item you pick from the Carousel, and then this Rod can build a lot of items for Karma. Uh, almost any item component can build a good item off of Rod. Um, so in the end, you'll probably end up with a 3-item Karma. So in this case, even though JG is weaker than Decap, you still want to make JG instead. And there's a lot more things to cover besides this. And honestly, this is already pretty long. But these are just the basics and the most common mistakes I see. 